a few minutes late, uh, 904. Uh, next item is community development budget. Mitch. We are tag teaming the presentation um, similarly as we did with the human resource department uh, budget that we did at the last meeting. Um, so we have a short presentation for you to go through the community development budget for 15 or the proposed budget. Um, we're just going to go through the highlights so we're not going line by line um, in the budget just to give you a few highlights of what to expect in 15. Uh, we have the comparison between the 2015 proposed budget uh, versus the in parentheses 14 budget. And as you can see, the top line um, shouldn't be a surprise because we've talked about the restructuring that we've done at City Hall to where community development has gone down one staff position, um, which is the majority of the difference in the uh, decrease. Um, so we've broken it out to compare the years between salary and benefits, professional services, and then everything else category. And then I'm going to turn it over to Mitch for the actual highlights on the next slide. Yeah, so um, as um, Jen mentioned, we are, are down one uh, staff member, and uh, uh, it's that, that position was actually removed from the budget. And we have done the cross-training uh, with finance, and that is really working very well. Uh, the other, um, the only really thing of note within uh, this budget is I do have, I did ask for a slight increase in professional services, and um, that that's really based on um, you know looking forward in terms of development. I foresee that um, our uh, hearing examiner services will be uh, in greater need this next coming year. We've actually had three instances this year uh, as opposed to years prior where we had really, literally none uh, that we needed to utilize them for. So I see that, uh, that um, picking up. And then uh, in terms of uh, attorney fees as well, uh, anytime you have uh, development, uh, you tend to accrue uh, other attorney fees related, uh, associated with that. So that's the other line item that I bumped up uh, slightly, only by 500 bucks. But um, that, that's really it for my budget. Questions for Mitch? The, um, the development fees for the, the, I forget what you call the officer uh, that reviews the development. Hearing examiner? Yes, the hearing examiner. Yes. Um, these are fees that we don't commit in, until they perform the service, right? That's correct. So we add to your budget, you don't use it, we get it back. Yep. Exactly. I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah. Much. Yep. <laughs> How much do we spend on hearings? And somebody else pays for it. Um, <laughs> in my, my budget, it, this, for this year, it was $7,500. Um, typically, it's around $1,500 uh, per hearing. Uh, so five hearings a year? Yeah, that's what I, that, that's what I um, put for next year. And if I'm short, I'll be back in front of you and you know, telling you that things are good and we have more hearings and I need more money. And you have more fees coming in to yes. pay for more hearings. Mm -hmm. Other questions for Mitch? No, I'm... Okay. You're off the hook. Oh, quick question. Are you holding up? How am I holding up? In this time of short staff. Uh, I'm doing very well, thank you. Actually, uh, Jessica, last week started back from working from home uh, a few hours a day. Uh, it's been phenomenal. I don't have to watch her email anymore and keep track of those things. She's PMing projects from home, and I couldn't be happier about that. She's project managing some projects from home? Yeah, uh huh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you slurred, that sounded. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's late. <laughs> I haven't eaten dinner. Your clerk, is, your <laughs> clerk is cringing and turning many shades of red. Okay. I was red before we came in. Right. <laughs> Any other questions for Mitch? Go home. Thank you. Admin budget. Dave, you're up. What? Jen will kick it off and say. Okay. All right. Here we go with the administration budget. Um, comparing, again, the 15 to the 14 budget. Between the years, uh, professional services, operations, and maintenance, basically everything else. And then we broke out the strategic planning initiative funds of the 18,000 um, as a separate professional service line item on this presentation because those are part of the highlights that Dave's going to talk about. Would you go 
go back to that page again, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So uh, just to focus a little bit of attention to professional service and highlights for 2015, what we'll be focusing on, uh, we have routine legal services that are required uh, of our administrative function. An example of that would be the work that we'll be doing with Don here in the next couple of weeks on the invocation resolution that is charged to the administration budget under legal services. So any variety of legal services that we require um, are covered with that. Uh, we also will continue uh, legislative and infrastructure advocacy and support. So far, our service provider has been Lloyd Halverson, and he's gone to Olympia with us. Uh, he's helping us uh, in a number of areas uh, to affect our legislative agenda and to secure preferred financing and funding for our um, infrastructure projects. He's helping us with applications and uh, we've already seen some success as a result of, of his help. Uh, and then I'll have another slide on this last item. Uh, out of the uh, strategic, excuse me, the survey, it's in the strategic plan, but then in the survey um, we've all had some conversation and renewed emphasis about enhanced, an enhanced communication strategy for the city with our community. And uh, so that is an area where we've identified some funding in the professional services line item and administration to help with that. Um, and I'll, I'll have a slide and a couple slides that talks about our overall strategy there in terms of financing. Uh, as you know, uh, for the past two years, we've had an $18,000 appropriation that the council asked for uh, originally in 2013 to uh, implement uh, strategic planning initiatives at your direction. Our proposal for 2015 is that we spend the strategic planning funds uh, in two areas. One would be uh, an item that you deferred on in 2014 in order to do the community survey. Uh, a close second to that in your consideration was uh, support for uh, the Grassroots Downtown Association, which has now formed. Uh, and so I brought that back based on, based on your direction and then also your direction on enhanced communication. So some money in uh, strategic planning for that as well. So the strategy uh, around enhanced communications, and this doesn't get into the details of, of what the enhanced communication will be. This gets into cobbling together some funding so that we can go after that strategy looking at uh, roughly $21,000 to provide enhanced communication. Nine of that, as you just saw uh, from the strategic planning line item. Some of our communications would be around utilities, so we can leverage some of our utility operating funds, and we've targeted $4,000 for that. You see the 2300 would come from uh, reprioritizing within the administration's line item. And then if we are successful with the public safety lid lift, uh, quite a bit of our communication will be around um, uh, code enforcement things, seasonal things around code enforcement, safety information, and, and the like. And so we believe it would be appropriate to use a portion of those proceeds to help with enhanced communication. In terms of uh, using those funds, not all of those funds would go to additional help but we talked about in, uh, informally at a couple settings about getting some additional help. Uh, we would use some of those funds for internships, paid internships and or professional services and then we'll supplement those with our own reprioritizing our own internal staff uh, around communications and then uh, that money which we don't spend on the actual human resources help uh, to do the communications would be for any any collateral, if, if mailings or postage or developing uh, documents and the like. So we believe that uh, with that amount of funding, we will be able to take uh, some good strides to enhance our communications in 2015. For the remainder of this year, we are looking to do some things as well. We have some funding left over in at the administration's professional services area. It's only about $2,300 left. 
so it will be modest, but it will give us it'll give us a kickstart. So that's on the communication strategy, and then we'll work together with the council and, and everyone on um, the details of what, what that strategy be once we get going. Um, so those really be the highlights. Uh, otherwise, pretty much a um, uh, back at the other slide, um, the same financing level in admin that we've had year over year. Questions for David or Jen? I'm very pleased that you're finding the money for some enhanced communications. Are, are we going to get a final report on our survey? Yes, I received uh, the final report. Um, there were a couple of uh, comments I needed to make to them, just a couple minor things they needed to change. Uh, they've done that. They sent it back to me, and so I will be forwarding that to you. There's a lot. Uh, it's all the same information, but there's some depth to it now and some detail that you can peruse at your leisure. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder if, on that. Is it possible to use uh, hotel motel tax for the downtown promotion? Potentially, and we are looking at that. Uh, that's a different budget, so we didn't we didn't show that here. <clears throat> when we promote our downtown, uh, if we can make reasonable findings that we are targeting people from 50 miles away, then yes, we can do that. So it depends on exactly what we're doing. The reason I ask is uh, I've got eyes on that nine thousand dollars for streets. Oh, <laughs> it's pretty bad when you're when you're looking for pennies, but doggone it, we're in that situation. So let's do it. Other questions, comments? We gave you the softballs up front, so I, I was just going to mention. I forgot to mention that uh, included in this budget. Uh, I should have mentioned this right at the top. It's uh, the mayor, and myself, and Rose. Okay, uh, that takes care of the other items that we had on the workshop agenda. Uh, so now we're back to our regular, the other items on the agenda, public comments. Don, do you have anything for us? Don? Which one? Which Don? <laughs> I thought you were talking about him. That's no, no, funny. he's not public. I know, but people pronounce our name the same way. Um, no, sir. Okay. Uh, under Mayor's Report, I've got a couple, three things for you. Uh, one, we had an awesome stand-up paddleboard. Um, that can come under the, uh, the tourism and hotel tax monies. Um, and I think those were pretty well spent this uh, a week and a half ago uh, for that competition. Um, if you're anywhere around the downtown, on certainly on Saturday, uh, some started coming in on Friday, and then uh, Sunday afternoon after everything was done, the hotel was full. Both hotels were full. Uh, all the restaurants downtown were full. The plaza wasn't quite as full, but that was only because as they came in and registered in the plaza for the party, they also gave them beer tickets for amnesia. So silly, silly stand-up paddle boarders, they went beer, free beer, free beer, and off they went. So um, that was kind of back and forth, but I think they've got a lot of things to build on for the next year. There were I don't know how to estimate how many people were down there on the waterfront. Um, there were a few hundred. Um, it was a, it was an awesome competition. Um, some photo finishes, some people trying to photo finish that were off of their boards and diving in instead, which didn't count, but um, it was neat. It was neat to see stand-up paddle boarders from, and uh, some of you may have seen them in, uh, in some of the blogs and things that went out from the Caribbean, from Canada, from France. Um, it was cool. You know, the one young man from uh, the Caribbean that said that he just, when he found out about this, he had to come do it. He paddle boards uh, competitively in the Caribbean, came up here, absolutely wanted to be part of it. He was out front for I don't know how long, um, and then struggled a little bit. So instead of coming in first, he came in first doing a handstand on his paddleboard. Um, but to hear him talk about Washougal and the time he had here, all those kind of things, that's what we want to see people in the Caribbean doing and coming and enjoying town. So it, uh, it, was, it was a great uh, couple of days. Um, a item for your calendars coming up in October, October 3 and 4, Friday and Saturday. 
uh, our second annual Oktoberfest uh, down at Amnesia uh, Brewing. And that one you'll get uh, more information on. We've got the posters that are, uh, are being prepped, so we'll make sure that those get around so that you've got all the details and the hours on those. Um, I also have a uh, individual for your consideration for our salary commission. We have two openings on the salary commission right now. We have an application from one, uh, one individual in the community that you should all have or have seen copies of. Uh, Rachel Cooper has lived here in town for eight years. Uh, she's a supervisor over at Underwriter Laboratories. <coughs> and I would put her name forward to, uh, to you uh, to fill one of those two positions that we have open on the Salary Commission. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the appointment of Mrs. Rachel Cooper to the Salary Review Commission. We've got a motion and a second to approve the appointment of Rachel Cooper to the Salary Commission. Council discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Abstain. Okay. I, I would like to see these people come before us so that we can talk briefly with them. Sounds good to me. I'm not willing to buy a pig in a poke here. I don't, uh, and that's just an expression. I don't know this person. She looks uh, highly qualified. But the question I would want to ask is, what methodology is she going to use to come up with salaries? Okay. I don't know how my colleagues feel about that, but. I, I like it when they come before us, whether it's for cemetery parks or it's just nice to see a face with their name. So, but I. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I mean, yeah, well, this is, well, I was just going to ask, is that something that you want made as a requirement? And then a follow-up question to that, are they here just to be in the audience or do you want to interview them? I'd, I'd actually like to ask them specifics about the job. You know, I'd like to ask them one question about the job. I'd like to see how they interact with the council. Uh, I'd like to see their level of self-confidence. All the things I'd want to see if I were hiring a person. We're hiring this person to do this job. And I think we ought to put a little effort into it. I would also, if we're going to do that, I would suggest we put the appointments to the beginning of the agenda rather than make them sit through a uh, oh, amen. council. Absolutely. For clarification, the uh, salary commission is in regards to just the council members and the mayor. Is that correct? So, how far would you would you like us to take it that it's mandatory that the, not not mandatory? Just to invite them, you know, for and say that you might want to have it expressed to them that there was some sentiment on council that you could be asked some questions. Yeah. Might be harder to fill some jobs then. I, I will almost guarantee you that you won't get as many applicants for some of them, but well, I don't know that for sure. Even after we approve them, it would be nice to meet them, you know, just to have an acquaintance with them. Okay, we make that part of the process. If you're concerned about the. Uh, their concern being they're being interrogated limited to one question I don't think they'd feel interrogated as, as you know especially for some of you that have gone through the appointment process even the council I mean it's even for the best of people um, sometimes folks get uncomfortable in the case of the salary commission they meet once or twice a year and you know you may have people that are still going uh, okay we have, we have folks that don't even want to do the application <laughs> I mean, literally, don't want to do the application. Letter of interest, no problem. The application. They're not, they're not applying for the Federal Reserve Board of Governors here, you know. Nope. <laughs> I, we know that. It's. Yeah. 
what they may feel out there. So, okay. So I, we, yeah, I, I think it matters greatly in how it's approached. If, if, if you say to them, you will appear before the council to answer questions, it's very different than the council would like to meet you and they may have some questions for you. Yeah, I don't see Rose putting the first one to anybody, but. <laughs> Okay, uh, last item I have for you at uh, uh, last year we had brought up the subject of potentially having a student representative uh, to sit in with the council as kind of an ex officio member. Um, the school district has figured out their process for doing that and have someone selected if we were so, uh, so willing to continue forward on that starting this year. Um, young lady by the name of Paige Moore She's a senior this year, and uh, what we would like to do is bring forward to you at the next workshop some ideas of what they would be included in, what they wouldn't be included in, uh, potentially a resolution to memorialize the relationship between the school district and the student itself, um, and what their activities and input would be for both you as council and to the community as well. So uh, I know Aaron Hansen up at the high school is anxious to uh, to get the young lady integrated and get started and move from there. So we've kind of set them on a timeline of bringing it back to council at your workshop, at your next workshop. And then uh, if things are going well there, then bring back a resolution that will kind of encompass that at the following workshop in October. But we've invited her to come sit in on the, uh, certainly on the audience between now and then. Could I get staff to think about, I mean, the only thing that pops to mind immediately that they shouldn't be part of is an executive session. Yep. Uh, would, would you all think around that question a little bit, see if you can come up with anything else? Thank you. I've been on that one for a little while. And then the only input I would have would be that you might exclude some Washougal residents that are near where I live that are not do not go to Washougal High School. Right. No, they have um, to be a, a member of the school over here. Over there? Yep. Okay. So there would be some high school students that are city members that wouldn't be eligible then. Correct. For the program. Does that raise an equal protection argument, uh, <laughs> Counselor? <laughs> yeah, one of the things that we wanted to make sure, and, and that was one of Aaron's, I wouldn't say concerns, he just wanted to make sure they approached it the right way, is how they selected, or if the students selected, or however they selected who that individual would be. And they wanted somebody that would be, one, willing to do it, and uh, two, most respectful to the position itself and all of those kinds of things, and not just, if you left it to student elections and we were left with whoever we may, got, or we may get, um, we didn't necessarily want to go down that direction either, nor did he. So they kind of put their heads together as counselors and administrators and and did that selection in there so so we'll be bringing that back at the next uh, the next workshop that's all that I have Brent all right, nothing Michelle I'm just glad to be back well, uh, I just wanted to mention the Parks Foundation which has been very very good to Washougal their annual meeting uh, is at the Water Resources Center uh, 430 to 6.30 and I neglected to write down the date. Um, it is? It's on their website. The 16th. Uh, the 17th I will be in Portland for a worksite wellness summit. Hopefully bring some good ideas home for that. Um, one of the reasons wellness is so important to the city is that if we win the well cities designation it saves us two percent on our employee benefits trust costs that's a surprisingly large number two percent doesn't sound like much but um, and no budget committee meeting this Friday we'll have several people out of town Joyce? M Michelle and I thought we would meet, but just informally for the two of us. Like that. You frowned at. Nope. No. Um, I just have a comment. It seems like everywhere I go, people come to Washougal and play pickleball. So, 
So paddle board, pickleball, we're becoming famous for things that we never thought about. Mm -hmm. Anything else? David? Oh, several comments tonight. First one is that I remember touting pickleball as an economic development project, and I think that's going to come true. I certainly hope so. Uh, secondly, uh, some people may have noticed that I was texting tonight in the middle of the meeting, and the reason for that was that my wife was uh, driving my car tonight because hers had sprung a leak uh, in the cooling system, and mine sprung a leak in the cooling system while she was gone today, which is statistically an amazing coincidence <laughs> uh, for cars that were built seven years apart. I'll be asking the police to look into this because I think they were probably vandalized. Uh, but anyway, that's why I was texting tonight, and I apologize for that. I, I ran the possibility of having to run outside, find somebody to scoop up, and go find my wife on the highway. Because I came here tonight in, in, with Connie Joe Freeman. It was a lot better than walking. <laughs> Uh, there's a public safety meeting uh, at noon on Monday at the Washougal Police Department. Among the things that we'll be discussing are a new fee schedule for the fire marshal's inspection fees, which uh, may or may not raise interest among some businesses here in Washougal. Um, finally, I'd like to give my personal opinion on the new market tax credit proposal that was uh, brought forward tonight. Personally, I think it's a scam within a scam. The first scam is that SWEET is an employment benefit package for a former local politician at taxpayer expense. The second scam within that is that SWEET is funded by local taxpayers who are optimistic about receiving borrowed federal money that will be repaid by future generations. I think that's a disgrace. <laughs> And I will never vote for it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all I've got. Yep. Any other items for council? I would entertain a so motion moved. for adjournment. Mr. Mayor, I just a public comment. Is there a chance I can say a couple 60 seconds, John. You can do it. I didn't mention earlier about the coal train. It just got, or oil train occurred to me. One of the whereases in your oil uh, train thing might be, whereas the city council meets just a few feet from the train tracks, and some of the public comes to these meetings and may not want to get uh, involved in an explosion, something like that, you know. Anyhow, um, and then on the religion thing, I, it's surprising to me it's back on the table for the benefit of the new member. I spoke about this when it was before. I'm an atheist, so I've got different views. And some of those views would be, well, one of the comments a council member made that Congress has opened with a prayer since its beginning. My view of that is, how has that been working out for them? I don't think so, <laughs> frankly speaking. It doesn't seem to help. So if it's going to help you as much as it helps Congress, maybe you should just like leave that alone because I don't think the public is driving this. I think the public really wants an invocation. And of course, there's so many arguments. I only got 60 seconds, but who gets to decide out of those 1,500 or so religions, who gets to come up here, a Hare Krishna, a Muslim, a Christian of any sect that you can imagine? Where's the decision made? There's just, to me, the city council should take care of water, parks, budgets, you know, these things, these are the things that you're elected to do. You know, there's 40 churches in this area. You know, I would, if you do do it, please have, I'll be gone for the next public comment, but the vicar, uh, Jesse Vendetti, uh, gave, I thought, a fantastic uh, uh, comments on it the last time around. And I think that since it's not driven by the public, the public's not coming up here and saying, we think we need to pray because it might help you make better decisions. You know, from my point of view, that probably won't help. But uh, I think the public uh, should have a chance to come up here and weigh in on it and see what they think before you take that step. You seem to have uh, ran the city for a long time without that. I just, in my view, we don't need it. But anyhow, I don't know if that was over 60 seconds, but I tried. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay. I appreciate it. Let's start being more like Congress. Let's not do budgets this year. Let's just continue our resolution <laughs> that we renew every three months. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's how would how would that work out? Let's not do that one. I would entertain a motion for a oh. 
I'm not surprised that God hasn't answer, answered Congress's prayers. I think we have a better shot at it. I would entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. We are adjourned. Thank you.